All right, so 35. Yes. So these kind of things. myself and the way that I normally show people is not the only way to do this um, you could get LCD between these two put those together divide, division by this is multiplication by the reciprocal all that kind of stuff I just personally like multiplying everything by the LCD it just kind of seems a little more direct to me but if you like the other way there's not a damn thing wrong with it um, hopefully one of the two ways makes sense the whole problem with this thing is and, and again it's a lot like this it's a lot like if I had um, have we gotten here yet? Oh well. You guys will read this. Let me make these numbers here. This uh, if I had this equation, what could I do? Multiply by the LCD. Why am I allowed to do that? Because it has two sides. It's got an equal sign, right? So exact same idea here. It's got two sides. Top side, bottom side, right? So I'm allowed to multiply both sides by anything I want to except zero. So I'm going to multiply by the LCD just like I would here. It's really a nice analogy between this, these two kind of problems. So what is the LCD? Good. It needs two A's and three B's. Cool. So the LCD would be A squared B cubed. So if I multiply everything by, just get more direct. We multiply everything by a squared b cubed. You just see what happens in each piece. Here, it just picks up the whole thing because it doesn't have anything down below to cancel anything. So it just gets 3a squared b cubed. Excuse me, we can uh, a is a squared or just a? I'll see <clears throat> a wouldn't be enough because he's got two of them. Uh, with the uh, bottom now. So it's really the same thing as one third plus one ninth. The LCD is not three. The LCD is three times three, right? Mm -hmm. So here, when I look at just letters on the bottom, A squared, B squared, C to the fourth, M to the ninth, I really just collect whoever's got the highest power, mm -hmm. right? He's only got one, but he's got two, so everybody's going to need two. That would be the LCD. That's where they would both agree. I could give him one more A, and he would be there. He's got three B's, he's only got one, so the LCD's got to have a B cubed in it, right? Mm -hmm. so it's really kind of nice when it's just letters. I can just focus on the highest power <coughs> to see what my LCD is going to be. So that's why I got A squared B cubed yes. for my LCD. And now I just erase what I did. So 3A squared B cubed. What happens here? Four. The B cubes. 4A. Yeah, the B cubes go away. 1A goes away, so I get plus 4A. Over three, three plus eight. Yeah, the a squares go away, yes. and one b goes away. So I get three b squared plus a b squared. Is that cool? Distributing that through. Is everybody cool with <coughs> the cancellation they have? So what am I multiplying by now? B squared. So just distribute that through. All right, just a second. Um, if I take A outside. Yeah, can anything come out of everything? No. Does that have a B? No. no. Does that have an A? No. no. Any of the numbers can come out? No. no. I'm done. I can't simplify this because there's nothing common to everything. So there's nothing I can reduce. So I'm done. So before I do that one, let's do one more like that. Um, so what if I had... Um,
you know, it's the same problem here, but that's all right. So whenever I have a complex fraction, what a complex fraction means is a fraction that has fractions inside of it, right? And anytime I say that, I always think about it, it's like a really bad inception. Mm -hmm. um, I can kill those fractions inside the fraction by multiplying by the LCD. I can always kill fractions by doing that. When am I allowed to? When I have an equals, because it's got two sides, or when I have one big ass fraction, because then it has two sides. I always need something to balance me out. So what would the LCD be amongst all these things? Yeah, the LCD would be x squared, because that's the highest x power I see. And? Y squared. Y squared, because it's the highest Y power I see. Everybody, I can make everything become X squared, Y squared if I wanted to. So let me give you an alternate way to do this. Let me see if you guys like this better. And it's actually a little bit more like how I do my equations. Instead of multiplying first, how do I make this become that? What does it need? 2X, two X, uh, two X to Y. Yeah, so it needs an X and, and Y squared. Is that cool? That's what that needs to become that, right? It's got one x, it needs one more. It's got no y, so it needs two. What does he need? Y. Just a y. And what does this guy need? X. <clears throat> yeah, he just needs an x. Cool? Now, let me see if you guys are good at this. If I multiply by the LCD now, wouldn't it just cancel everywhere? I've already made everything have the same denominator. So if I multiplied by this, it would just cancel, and you'd be left with this and this <coughs> and this. You guys see that? Let me, let me rewrite this. <coughs> what do we get here? We get 2xy squared over x squared y squared minus 3y over x squared y squared over 2x minus xy over x squared y squared. So the only difference between what I did there and what I'm going to do here is I first made everything have the same bottom, then I'm going to kill it. Here, I first multiplied by the LCD and it, everything picked up what they would have needed. What would this have needed? Oh, let me see one that we can actually see. What would this have needed to make it the LCD? The LCD was A squared B cubed. What does he need? Two more Bs. What did he end up picking up? <clears throat> Two Bs. I mean, so, so it's, it's the same process, I'm just doing it in a slightly different order. This might be easier to see, I don't know. Uh, so now if I multiply by the LCD, top and bottom, it just cancels directly. There's not, you don't have to worry about it cancels and then what's left, it cancels and then what's left. So that's what I had to do here. So if you don't like that, try to keep track of what's left alive. Make everything have the same LCD, the same denominator first. And then it just goes right out. And what am I left with? What am I left with on the top? 2xy squared. Good. 2xy squared. Minus 3y. Minus 3y. Over 2x minus xy. No numbers come out. He has no x's. He has no y's. I'm done. There's nothing common to everything, so I can't reduce this. So I'm, I'm done. Yeah. Now I'm confused because this is the same uh, way. Why uh, to, uh, here we have two sides. We should uh, multiply by. LCD. No. So so again here again, you could do this problem the same way I did that one. Uh -huh. No problem. Mm -hmm. And you'd end up in the same place. I just wanted to give a slightly different way in case that one didn't make as much sense. Hopefully one of these ways makes some kind of sense. I mean, the whole thing here is, I got more fractions than I want. I got one big-ass fraction, I can't do anything about that, but the little fraction inside, we can at least kill those. Please, dear God. And I can't, because I can multiply top and bottom by anything I want to. So I'm going to multiply by the thing that will kill all the bottoms. But to make it maybe a little bit easier to see, you could first make all the bottoms the same as the LCD, and then it's going to kill them directly. You won't have to keep track of what's left over. Does that make some sense? Mm -hmm. So it's the exact same motivation and process when I have an equation with fractions in it. We want to kill the fractions. Dear God, let me kill those fractions. And I'm allowed to because there's two sides. Here, fractions inside of a... Oh, 
kill those fractions. Why am I allowed to? Top, bottom. I can multiply both by the same thing. So I'm going to be smart and multiply by the LCD. Because that's the thing that would kill all the bottoms. Yeah. Is that kind of like a helper fraction? Like, I learned that like, you put a fraction to the side of one under your LCD and you can just compare it, right? See how you did that on the side? Yeah, so this, right. very often I see in the, in the early books, you know, this is one. That like you put one over x squared y squared and compare <laughs> both, both of the sides and try to make it look like x squared y squared? That's what I did yeah, here, yeah. 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 By by giving it what it was missing. Yeah. Good. I like it. Cool. I like it. So either way, yeah. When, uh, when I did number 35, uh, when I do it the other way, it comes out factored. That, that's the answer you put. Somehow it ends up being factored if you do it the Oh, if you um, LCD for each one individually. Okay. But it's the same as that, but just factor out. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it's uh, nice to be factored because then you can see if anything cancels. Yeah, I just didn't know if that's uh, if you're gonna mark it right or you see the other way. I'll mark this right. You always have to check and see if it's gonna reduce, and it's a little easier if it's already factored to see if it's gonna reduce. But I can see there's nothing gonna go anywhere here so I can't <coughs> so I know I'm done here yeah cool so either way you want to do it okay. either way so the LCD is like the biggest power right? so <coughs> the LCD is uh, <coughs> the biggest power exactly okay. cool and it's funny because we've known that forever the LCD here is three squared not three the highest power I see right. if I put 127 so what's the LCD gonna be 27, again, 3 cubed, the highest power I see, the one that's got the most stuff is probably going to be the main driver in the LCD because everybody else is going to be trying to catch up to them. I need this, I need this. So the one that's got the most is kind of setting the pace. Is that, I'm mixing all kind of metaphors there, I know I am, but it's too bad. That's why I don't teach English. Yeah? I have a question on your problem. On 7. Oh, wait, I skipped somebody over, and then I'll come to you. Okay. 80? In, in the in the which book? In the blue book? McKeague? So six point five. Point four. Number eighty? Eighty. Alright. So this is related to actually a little bit of seven three seven four in the white book. So you don't know what type it is until right down. So number 80 says this. Oh, I got you. Number 80 is actually a good one to look at in general. You with the white book, this is one disadvantage. I don't know they want to do the 2A squared. Yep. So later this semester, we're actually going to prove something called the quadratic formula. If you've ever heard of that. Negative B, plus or minus, square root of blah, blah, blah. Okay. So we're going to actually prove that. Oh, yes. We're going to derive it. Uh, in order to be able to do that, we have to be able to do this. This is a small piece of the derivation. How do I do this? What do I do first? Order operations always saves your ass. you got to square this thing first, right? So negative C over A plus... Four four, eight okay, how do you add those fractions? Four eight yeah, LCD. LCD. So what's he need? Four eight. Yeah, he needs the four A. Is that cool? He's already got one A, he needs another A, and he needs that four that got that guy has. It's trying to keep things fair. Like having two little kids. You gotta make sure they both get the same amount of cake, or it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> Uh, so then what do I get here? Minus 4AC. Good, minus 4AC plus B squared. B squared minus 4AC, that sounds familiar. Maybe. Unless you've never seen quadratic formula, then no. B squared minus 4AC, you see that? Intriguing. So, of course, when we do this, we have to do a little work, and then we get to a point that's got this in it, and we've already basically got that part done. And then we'll keep going and get the whole formula. Right now, all I gotta do is that piece. 
That wasn't too evil. That squared part might be what threw some people off. I mean, you got to square that sucker. What's that? That's it. Yep, you're done. Why would I not want to... In this case, why would I not want to try to factor? Because that would, that would kind of be going backwards. I, I know nothing's going to reduce here. I don't want to split it back up because that would be going backwards. So I, I know I'm done. Nothing cancels. I don't want to go backwards. So I know I'm done. How do you know what again? Oh, um, tell me, tell me this. And I had a question like that just a minute ago. It's not a question of whether you should keep it or not. It's realizing that you have to because uh, what's two sevenths plus one seventh? Well, it's three, right? No, that's crazy. It's not three. It's what? Yeah, you got to keep that. You got to keep it. Why? Because you got one, two sevenths plus one sevenths is three sevenths. Same way that two x plus one x is three x. Do you see that? So I got negative four ac four a squares plus b squared four a squares. So I'm going to end up with negative four a squared plus b squared four a squares. I mean, it's got to still be there. It's not as easy to say as this was, but it's the same idea. Nothing would cancel this out. Where, what would cancel this out? Nothing. Am I allowed to multiply by 4a squared? No, I don't have an equation. I don't have a big-ass fraction that this is sitting in. I don't have two sides of something. So I just have to keep the denominator. So you should err on the side that it should be weird if the denominator goes away. Equations gives you the opportunity to kill them because you can multiply those big fractions because you can multiply top and bottom. But in general, if I'm just simplifying, I cannot get rid of those denominators. They have to still be there. Yeah, I do that. But the it was because the one we just did a minute ago, it had a top with fractions in it and a bottom with fractions in it. Can't I multiply the top and bottom of a fraction by anything I want to, except zero? So then I can kill the, I, I really want this thing. If I have an equation, right? I can multiply both sides by 12 and kill the denominators. But if I have this, can I multiply by 12? No, you cannot, right? No, because there's nothing to balance that out. You can't just suddenly go, I don't like your problem. I'm going to make it 12 times bigger. Nah, nah. Whereas if you have this, if I multiply this by 12 and multiply that by 12, I haven't changed a damn thing. It's still equal to each other. Yeah. Okay. So the top and bottom of a fraction, same way. If I multiply top and bottom by the same thing, it's still the same fraction. It just looks a lot better. Okay. So I think last time we left off, uh, we got... Wait, 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 I have a oh. question. Oh, yeah. On 7.2, on number 12, I just wondering, do you cancel out the A's, and then would it be 3 into 18? So it would be 12 over A to the 4th? 12 over A to the 4th, yep. Okay. I like it. So, I mean, whenever you have a fraction times a fraction, what are you trying to do first? Reduce. Mm -hmm. And then you, whatever's left over, you multiply it across, right? No matter if there's A's or M's or numbers in there, you just do the same thing. Okay. So, um, we did... Let me see if I can catch up to where I was. Yeah, we did 7-7, seven, seven, which was related to 6-7 in the blue book. That was where we did the distance rate time problems. This is where you're going to see the kind of problem, finally, the classic word problem. Um, the train leaves Wyoming going south. It's so far, so fast. Yeah. Oh, yeah.
Um, so, if there's no questions on that one, I'm going to get right into chapter 12, which is chapter 7 in the Blue Book. out of here I think for right now and let me just see where we are with understanding this if I said if I just said what squared what number squared is not all right that's part of it so the question is a little misleading. It's not like if I said, all right, which person in here has at least two bucks? So hopefully more than one person is. So there might be more than one answer. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Three and negative three, right? If I square three, I get nine. If I square negative three, I still get positive nine. So three and negative three. But what is, is so that's cool, right? So there seems to be, there really are two square roots to something. But when I write this, so these are the square roots of 9. But when I write this, what is square root of 9? 3. End of story, right? If I want the negative one, I have to actually be very specific and say, I want the negative root. So this symbol is called the principal square root. When you see this written this way, that wants the positive answer. You have to be specific and ask for the negative answer if you want it. Some of you guys might remember, we're not quite there yet, but maybe somebody's done this. If I have this equation, how do you solve it? And what do you have to do when you put a square root? Plus or minus? Does that sound familiar? That's related to what I'm talking about here and what I'm talking about there. When I say x squared equals 9, I, I'm asking you this question. Your answer should be both of these. But you have to actually specify the positive answer and the negative answer. You have to tell me that. So that's kind of like a good, all this together, bam, in one problem. Um, so that is a little bit of weirdness at the beginning. But then beyond that, this stuff is pretty straightforward. Um, so what what's the square root of 49? 7. Because... It takes two sevens to make 49, right? What's understood to be here? A two. There's a two understood to be here. This is the index. The two is understood to be there when I don't write it down. And the only reason that is is because the square root is the most often used one. Math people are lazy, so we all just said, ah, forget write that two. We'll save a little time. Well, if I put something like this down. Yeah, so now you think the same exact thing. Every single root is thinking backwards. What does it take this many of to make this when you multiply? That's why it's seven. seven what does it take this many of to multiply to be eight? Two, two, two. two. It takes three twos to multiply to be eight. You guys kind of with me? Of course, this should be review for the most part. Um, so what if I hit something like this here? Um, what do you got, Jeff? Yeah. What do you do? You look at your manual and you figure out how to do that in Kappa. No. What do you think you do? I mean, really, really, why did we know this one so easy? Because what is 49? We knew it's 7 times 7. I don't have to write it down. And 8, we know that's 2, 2, 2 from doing cubes, right? Factoring cubes. We know it's 2, 2, 2. So what do I just start doing here? I have to actually do this explicitly because I don't know what the hell 243 is made of. Shit. What goes into it? 381. Good. Right? 3 goes into both parts. So 3 goes into 81 times. And 81 is 9 times 9. And each one of these is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So how many 3's do I have total? 5. So now what's the fifth through to 243? Three, because it takes five threes to make 243. Bam. Right? Coolness. I'm going to reference this entire discussion we're having right now when we learn something called logarithms. 
Has anybody heard of that? Anybody heard of that? When you realize that it's just knowing what the question is here, translate this symbol into an English question. The question the symbol asks is, what does it take five of to multiply to be this? So when we start doing logarithms, I'm going to say, what is the question the symbol is asking when I'm giving you a problem like this? If you know what the question is, it's easy to answer the damn thing. Hopefully. Oh, what's, uh, what's this here? It's not two, because it doesn't take two twos to multiply negative four. It's not negative two, because two negative twos make positive four. It's getting a little ahead, but I like it. That's the actual uh, right answer, just about. But this is not real. We'll just call it not real for right now, since we have not gotten into complex numbers. Some of you guys might, might be a while, or maybe you've never seen them. I don't know. Complex numbers. Imaginary numbers. Unfortunate name. Because it verifies some students thinking, oh, this is all the shit's made up. Right there, see? Imaginary freaking numbers. You're saying it right there. Like, shit. It's not right. Uh, but what about this? It's also not three. Careful. That one's fine. That has no problem. Yeah, negative two. Why can that not be done, but that one can? Because any pair of negatives will do what? Cancel. So your answer will always be positive. So any even root, sounds like a note, especially when I slow down. Any even root cannot handle negative inputs. They will always come out imaginary, not real. Odd roots are very laid back. Right? Five negatives would still leave a negative left over, wouldn't it? Pair dies, pair dies, I got a negative. So odds can handle negative inputs. Evens freak the hell out. Not their fault. Bless you. Thank you. You guys with me? So what is the 11th root of negative 1? Negative 1. What's the 12th root of negative 1? Not real. I thought it was 6. Say again? 6. 6? Yes. 6 from where? Root 6. Oh, oh. If I had root 6? Yes. No, no. Uh, yeah, six. Six yeah, root? Yeah, yeah, fine. Of negative one? Yeah. Yeah, it would also be not real. Any even root cannot handle negative inputs. Any odd root totally can. Okay. All right. Um, so that actually leads to something we did very recently. Um, and I think I even gave this as an example. Um, Recall, when I have a problem like this, what's the domain? I think about the restriction in English. What's the restriction on something like this? Say it. Three. No, 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 don't, not specifically. What's the restriction on something that is a ratio, a fraction? What's the restriction? The bottom? Can't be... Zero. So in English, or at least Jeffish, the bottom can't be zero. Because sometimes I do speak sort of English. So the bottom can't be zero. Now, now I've got to translate in that into math. So I'm overanalyzing this. I know I am. But just give me a minute because we always overanalyze easier problems to help us with harder problems. So the bottom can be zero. What's the bottom? No, what is the bottom? X squared minus times. So the bottom, so I'm just translating now, can't be zero. And then I solve that. So if I can say the restriction in English, I translate what I just said into math, and I solve. You guys kind of with me? That's the way that almost every domain question will work. So here, you know, I finally will catch up to you guys. X can't be 3 or negative 3, right? Okay, cool. You're all like, that's exactly what I was thinking for the minute you wrote that damn thing down, but I mean, suffer through me doing this. Um, so what, now let's go here. Now, what's the domain of that? And 
when I say domain, it's understood that I'm talking about real numbers. So what values can I plug in here and have it come out real? Can you state the restriction in English? What must be true about anything in here inside of a square root? Can't be negative, right? How do you tell if a number is negative? It's less than zero. I love it. So it can't be less than zero. You guys with me? What's another way to say that? Because it can't be less than zero. It must be greater than or equal to zero. So in English, the restriction is The restriction in English is, and yes, that's English. It's actually, it looks like Egyptian hieroglyphics. But the restriction in English is the inside must be at least zero, right? Can't be less than zero, so it must be at least zero. So how do I say that in math? The inside, x minus one, must be at least, how do you say that? Zero. Greater than or equal to? Zero. And then solve it. Add one, x must be bigger than or equal to one. Yeah. You could probably, hopefully you could tease that out just by looking at this. I mean, what's the smallest number I can put in here? I can't put like uh, zero in here, can I? That would end up with a negative inside. Some people would think two, because I could do the square root of one, but I could do the square root of zero. So I could actually put a one in there. Is that what that says? The smallest number I could use is one. Everything else has to be bigger or equal to that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. How do you know it has the underlying there? Oh, this here? Mm -hmm. Because I can take the square root of zero. Remember, the restriction on a square root is the inside can't be negative which means the inside can't be less than zero. And what's the opposite of being less than zero? Greater than or equal to zero, right? It's a really good movie for a long time. Um, what about this? here was to let you work for a little while and come in and be evil. But let me be evil right now. That's a fifth root. What's the restriction on a fifth root? Nothing. There's no restriction, right? Fifth roots are, that's odd root. It can handle positives, negatives. You with me? So what's the domain? All the numbers. There's no restriction I can say. So there's nothing I have to throw out. You get, so it's better for me to be evil now in front of you than evil to you on a quiz or a test. <laughs> so this would be all real numbers. Because why? Because again, odd roots can handle negatives and positives inside, right? Why was this domain not all reals? Because there are certain numbers the square root can't handle. Therefore, there are certain x's you might have to throw out. Here, the fifth root can handle positives and negatives. If the inside is not some funky-ass function with its own problems, and it isn't, it's a nice little polynomial, then the fifth root says, I'm cool with everything. X can be whatever the hell it wants to be. I can take it. All right, good. So don't start. <laughs> yeah. I will do that, but I won't make the inside this ugly thing that'll take you forever to do wrongly. I'll do this. So you... I mean, it, so what if I give you this problem? Two the one that you guys started working? 2x. Oops. Why am I coming up with that? How would you do that work? Yeah, it's not all real numbers. Well, how do I figure out what it is? Because 4. Good, because of the 4, 3. Now, how do I start figuring out what it is? What has to be true about this? Can't be less than zero. It must be the opposite. It must be greater than or equal to zero. Good. Yeah. So when you ask for the domain, like, is that the answer at the top versus all real numbers? That would be your answer. That's the answer. Yeah. 
and then if it's in the if it's further part, like you said, if it can't handle it, you have to set it up. Yeah, if it's an even root, uh -huh. then you have there is a restriction then that you can say. Okay. Here, there's no restriction I can say. So math would say everything's good. There's no restrictions. Here, there is a restriction. The inside can't be less than zero. It's got to be greater than or equal to zero. So I write that, solve it. So I add four, divide by two, x greater than equal to two. Right. You could write that in interval notation even. All right, that would be two to infinity. Is that cool? It's always going to be related to zero because the thing about square roots and cubes and all, it's, it's always related to positive, negative. And what's the dividing line? Zero. So it's always going to be related to zero for these roots. Okay. Let me see. Oh, good. All right. So here's something a little bit evil. Um, seems to be the theme. What's that? It's not evil yet. Two. What's this? And the answer, unfortunately, is not quite x. What could be wrong? Now, now, on one level, I understand, of course, the square root's going to kill the square. That makes sense, right? Like 4 is 2 squared, the square root is the opposite of square, so they cancel. So somehow this square root should come out to be x. What's wrong with x itself? What, what can I not have as an answer to a square root problem? I can never have what kind of number as an answer to a square root? Negative. I can't have negative answer, right? What could x itself be? Negative. <laughs> Shit. So for example, what if x was negative 2? This would be the square root of negative 2 squared. Well, what's negative 2 squared? 4. So what's the square root of 4? 2. So is the answer x? No, it was x was negative 2. So the answer to this actually has, what, what strips negatives off would always make something positive? Good. Remember, square roots, even roots, are always the guys that have all the problems. Odd roots, they don't care. So if I had a similar thing, if I had cube root of x cubed, that is just x. Because we saw earlier, the cube root could have a negative answer, can't it? So for example, cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. And what's negative 8 is negative 2 cubed. So it can have negative answers. So that's why the cube root doesn't have any problems. It doesn't need an absolute value to save itself, right? Any even root, so if I had the eighth root of x to the eighth, that would be absolute value of x. Yeah. Okay. All right, all right. But you'll notice very quickly in the homework, they'll have one section that says uh, find all the roots. And then at some point they start saying assume all the variables are... Uh, positive. So then you don't have to worry about the absolute value symbols, right? You guys kind of with me? So it, it is a big of a, it's a big point to make that the actual answer to this is absolute value of x, but at some point they just start saying, let's assume x is positive, so that I don't have to write that absolute value out. Okay. So what do you think about this here? Um, cancel each other out, but since there's a variable, I have to put absolute values around it, just in case. Is that only because it's in parentheses? No, it's because there's a variable in there. I had to do that here, right? There's no parentheses, <coughs> but it's because there's a variable inside, and it's an even root. So I don't know what the hell the variable is. It could be negative, so I have to absolute value it, just in case. Okay. 
Okay. If so, it was, if yeah. it was all you could, you just left it like that, right? With the negative one? If it was what now? If it was five? Yeah, if it was a fifth root of this to the fifth power, then I wouldn't need <coughs> the absolute right. value. Good. Um, now, let's go ahead and do what I just said, because it kind of gets in the way of figuring out further stuff. So let's assume that all my variables, all expressions are positive. Or at least zero. So we don't have to worry about absolute values for right now. Okay. What do you think um, that is? X absolute. All right, for one thing, I don't have to worry about absolute values right now, do I? Because I said all of them, and even then, to tell you honestly, the, considering what the answer will be, it's going to be positive anyway. Yeah, okay. But what do you think the square root does to this? Uh, X2. X squared and X, X squared and the... Uh, so what is the square root of X to the fourth? X squared. X squared, right? Okay. Because again, what does it take two of to multiply to be X to the fourth? It takes two X squares. And again, so no absolute values needed in this part of stuff here, right? Because I'm assuming, why, why did I need that absolute value? Just in case T minus four was negative. But now I'm saying, assume it's fine. Assume they're all positive. Just to get that the hell out of the way. So we can focus on the idea that we're talking about right now. Um, so what about this here? I'm, I'm three. Yeah, no, do you see how silly this is? What does it take six up to make M18? Well, it takes M3s, right? So what was the shortcut? Six goes into 18 three times. That kicks so much ass. It's a beautiful shortcut. And it kind of makes sense. A root is sort of the opposite of a power in, the, in a certain way. They, that root is kind of taking things down, whereas a power is bringing things up. So if I have 18 M's, but then I cut it in six pieces, I'm going to get M cubed. All right, let's keep going with that idea. Let me see how far I go with that right now. Well, a little bit. <coughs> uh, let's see what's this here. X squared. X squared. Y cubed. Y cubed. Uh, five. Z five. Yes. I mean that's. Kick so much ass, I mean, that's, right? I'd be mean, like, please make all of the problems this year. and I won't. It's too bad. Um, all right, so let me throw a few things in here at once. Actually, let's make it more interesting. Yeah. So write it down. Think about it. M4. M4. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. Okay. So let's see. Cube root of 27. 3 and 4. 3. M4. Yeah, M4. Four. Yes. Over. And, uh, A. A. B. B cubed. Okay, cool. I like it. And these last two problems, no matter what I said there, I wouldn't have to worry about absolute values, would I? Why is that? Because they're both. Odd roots, right? they're, they're cool with them. They need absolute values to cover their ass. They're, they're cool. They can take negatives or positives. Okay, so the last little thing I want to talk about is exactly what this seems to be leading to. Um, if you think back to our discussion about exponents, we had a real quick discussion about the properties of exponents. So, you know, when you multiply them and so forth, and what's x to the zero power? And what's x to a negative power? Yeah. The only kind of thing, so we plugged in there all these integers. We can now handle negative whole numbers, zero, positive whole numbers. We can handle all the integers. The only kind of number we haven't really put up there yet, the next type of number would be what the hell does a fraction do up there? What the hell would that be? All right, some of you guys are like, why worry about it, Jeff? Let's do that. We got to do it.
So let's investigate this. Let's see what it does to something. Um, nine to the one half. Let me, I don't know what the hell, how to do this. But how could I rewrite nine? How do I break that up? Yes, yeah, three times three, so it's three squared. Just to make sure everybody's with me so far. And what do you do with powers in this situation? Multiply. And what's two times one half? One, right? So you get three to the first. Is everybody with me? Yes. So this is one way to investigate something you don't know. You rewrite the problem in terms of things you do know and see what happens. So I rewrote this 9 as 3 squared, so I have another exponent, because then I know what to do here. I know my properties of exponents. I multiply this here, right? So what, do, what would do that? What would I do to 9 to make it 3 in general? What would you apply to 9 to make it become 3? Square, square root. And a square root does what to things? It cuts things in half, so it just makes sense. Exponents are based on what operation? Multiplication, good. <laughs> so if exponents are based on multiplication, a one-half power should somehow be cutting something in half multiplicatively. How do I cut something in half additively? I multiply it by one-half, right? Wouldn't that be 4.5? That would be half a nine. So when I say half of nine from that one, you got to be careful. I'll try to always say multiplicatively, just to make sure you know what the hell I mean. And I think I've already said this. When we're doing cubes and squares, I said cut everything in half. And you're all cool with it then, but I meant multiplicatively cut it in half, right? So it makes sense then that a one-half power is the exact same thing as a square root. That's because the square root is cutting it down in terms of multiplication. And a one-half power should be one-half of something multiplicatively, because exponents are multiplication, right? Kick ass. So there they go. That's the same thing. So this would both be 4. What about this? What would that be then? Just extending that idea. Beautiful. And look what's really cool here. The threes on the bottom. What's on the bottom of most plants? Roots, right? So when it's on the bottom, it's the root. I don't want any botanists or biologists coming in. What about the potatoes and shit? The roots are in the <laughs> Most plants, roots are on the bottom, right? So this would just be, I think you guys already said, two. Because, how do you rewrite? What's the one-third power mean? Two. Cube root. And the cube root of eight? Two. two. Yes, sir. I guess that one-third of eight is two, but how does that Well, if you get that one third of eight is two, that almost means you have to get that one half of sixteen is four because they're the same idea. One third of eight is two. Why? If you break eight into three parts, what is it? Two, two, two. Take one of those three parts. That's what one third means, right? So break sixteen into two parts. One half. So take one of them. Right. In fact, that's a really cool way to look at it. If I want to do twenty-seven to the two thirds. What's 27 in three parts? Three three. three, three, three. Take two of them. Three times three is nine. So the answer should be nine. So let me show you a little more direct way to do that. Because not everybody agrees with my conceptual way of looking at it. But it kind of, does, if it makes sense to you, that's awesome. But here's how you really do this. What's on the bottom of powers? Roots. So I know it's going to be the cube root. The top is the power. And let me show you why that's really kind of true. Are you cool with me? Can I write this like this? And for some reason I really wanted to? Why can I write that like this? Because what is this? Multiplication. Multiplication, two thirds. It's the same damn thing. And what does this say to do to the 27? Cube, it. Cube root it. And then square it. So the bottom is the root. So it's the cube root of 27. The top is the power. So that's how you can immediately rewrite a fractional exponent. You can immediately rewrite it as a cube and a power and then just attack it. The cube root of 27 is 3, because it takes three threes to multiply to be 27. And what's 3 squared? No. Which matched up with my earlier 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. If I take two of them, I get 9. Sweet. 
It's really the same thing. What's two thirds of six? Because a coefficient, um, this would be an additive idea. What's two thirds of six? Four. Well, six is two plus two plus two, right? And two thirds would say take two of those. So it's four. Now, of course, which way do we actually do it? Three goes into six twice, two times two is four. This is more of a conceptual idea. This is more like what's really going on behind the scenes. So that's really what I did here. What's going on behind the scenes, and then this is what the hell you do. Right? This is how you do the problem. Yeah. So how about you guys try this one? Um, don't say anything out loud. Just try it for a minute. idea is the wrong thing right here. So how can I immediately rewrite this? What's the root? Four. Fourth root, because that's on the bottom. To the third power. Four three to sixteen is two. Because it takes four twos to multiply to sixteen. Two cubed is eight. So you can break 16 into 2, 2, 2, 2. If I take three of those, 2, 2, 2, that multiplies the 8. That's, that's why that's the answer. That's three-fourths of 16 multiplicatively. Right. Yeah. How many takes four of four. to make this? Uh -huh. So the answer is two for the inside part because it takes four twos to multiply to be 16. I always get people that start dividing 16 by 4 and stuff like that, but that's not what that says, right? Cool. Okay. All right. So the last little thing I want you to realize, and obviously we'll do some more of these kind of problems, but hopefully you guys see how to immediately rewrite this. Um, actually, let me do one more of these before I get to this next thing. Get somebody tell me it's going to be 81 to the fourth power. I don't know if there's anybody like that in here, but why? Where do you think they would get that from? What kind of power is involved here? Negative power, right? What does a negative power mean? Flip. But I can't flip itself. A negative power will flip the thing that's being raised to it, right? What's being raised to negative power? 81. So the first thing I would do is just flip the whole damn thing around. That whole thing goes down. And now, how can I rewrite the bottom? What's 81 to the 1 fourth power? How do I rewrite that? What root? Four. Four. Fourth root. I think you guys should be able to tease that out. What is the 4 root of 81? Three. Good, because it takes four threes. 9 times 9, 3, 3, 3, 3. That's what makes 81. So that's 1 third. So there will be some negative powers floating around, and you don't care. First thing you do is just flip the whole damn thing, and then you start working on the bottom. Not a big deal. So here's the thing you have to realize. Um, realize. Uh, what, what's x squared times x to the 7? Nine. Nine. X to the 9. So what's x to the a times x to the b? Yeah, see, I always have people do that. You didn't tell me the answer here was 14. What did you do? 2 plus 7 is 9. So what's x to the a times x to the b? A plus b. Right? That is actually just a way to write the rule, isn't it? When you multiply like bases, you add the powers. That's a way to write that rule. Do I care what a and b are? 
I made them freaking A and B. <laughs> They're not even numbers anymore, but the rule doesn't care. The process does not care what's in there. Right? I've been saying that to my Math 88 students, my Math 90 students, because that's true. Math does the same thing no matter what. So by the minute I start doing this, everybody royally freaks out. Not everybody. But it's just multiplying like bases. What do I do with their powers? Add them. They happen to be fractions. So what do you need before you can add them? Like denominators. The process does not change. I still add them. They happen to be fractions, so I have a way I have to add them. Math doesn't care. Math says you've got to add whatever the hell they are. Yeah, so I make this 2 fourths plus 3 fourths, 5 fourths. So you're going to have a whole section that's going to be devoted to all the different properties of exponents. Like you'll have, but with fractions in them. So you have m to the 7 eighths over m to the 1 third. So you've got to subtract those. Get LCD, right? So the properties don't change. Just the things inside change. So you're going to have to get LCDs. Cool, man. And that's basically how far I wanted to make it today. I wanted to give us a little early day if I can. Is that all right? Yeah. So I have the quiz graded tomorrow. I have the practice test free tomorrow. If you can make it, there's a Friday session. And then Monday we'll do a little bit of new stuff and then review for the test. Yeah, this is 12-1-12-2. Yeah. In the